Um, Future Africa is a platform that provides capital, coaching and community for mission driven um, innovators uh, so who are seeking to build a future for Africa where prosperity and purpose is available to everyone. Hello all, my name is Chuba Ezequestli. I am a co-founder at Future Africa and a partner. You are watching Business Day Tech Breach. So the idea behind that is if you're, what you're building out is a platform, it goes beyond just writing checks and handing that money to startups so that you can flip and get your returns on it. It becomes about impact. It becomes about seeing a future where we create or where we use technology to solve pressing problems. So that, that's, that's what I think Future Africa is pretty different in multiple ways in terms of our mission, right, which is impact driven but at the same time very very focused as well on skill and ensuring that companies that are solving important problems can grow from a one-man, two-man um, journey to build a million, hundred million dollar companies, right? And the other part of it is also leveraging the network that surrounds us because we understand that it's one thing to go at it by yourself. It's one thing to say, you know what, we're just going to to invest a couple of money in companies and then expect returns. It's another thing to involve the community, right? And involve the network around and turn it into a platform because that way you bring in innovators, you bring in partners, you bring in media, you bring in everyone that can play a role in doing that because we understand more importantly than ever that people doing this as islands of their own is it's no longer, it's, it's, it's a suboptimal way of creating a future that you actually really want to see. You want to create a future that you want to see, have everyone be involved, make everyone play a role in it, at least everyone who is ex excited and interested in doing so. I mean, we've seen increasing and rising investments in uh, technology or startup uh, industry in, in, in Nigeria and in Africa at large, right? And a lot of it um, is coming from people from outside of the continent. Right, you have the Chinese making huge amounts of investments. We had rockets as well, you know, who came in years ago and did the same in terms of building out their platforms, which also ended up competing with ones that were being, you know, locally, domestically made in in, uh, in places like Nigeria and other parts of uh, of Africa. And what we realized is that it's important for if you want to see your future, it's very important for you to decide the future you want to see yourself. One of the things that has held us back in Africa is hoarding of knowledge because we have low social capital and then we also have of course low IP rules right but people have held knowledge back and when knowledge is held back then it's not optimized and one of the things that we seek to do is say how do we take all the knowledge that we know from ourselves from our own experience and from our experience of our partners and our network and put it in a way that everyone else can learn and at the same time while learning we then also provide them with the necessary capital that they need to grow because they need capital to grow. You have, so you have a place that is trusted, you have a place that has done all of that work for you. Prior to that, as an angel investor, you probably have to be running around. Maybe see this company, maybe talk to the founder, maybe, like, maybe you have some personal connection to the person, but it's all of those murky details, right, that makes it difficult for you to really just be like, oh, for you to really plunge in and make that decision to invest but now because you're coming through people who have done a lot of that work in terms of figuring out like where are these companies at in terms of this are they legit like are they actually doing what they're claiming to do is this some form of traction after going through our process like can we see that there's clarity as to what they're doing in terms of the problem that they're solving are they solving an important enough problem that whenever if there is a, a solution to this problem it's easy for them to find skill in it, and then that problem can be solved on, on, on a societal level. Those are the kind of questions that like, we ask, and then by the time we put that together, and by the time we have, like, we have more information, all of a sudden it works better. It's really just an information asymmetry thing. The less information asymmetry you have, the more you have chances of people actually making transactions. Mm -hmm.